you join me in the call to worship? This is a day of remembrance for us. We lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. Throughout the generations, we have received and handed on to others what the Lord has given to us, water for washing, the towel of service. The bread of his body, the towel of the new covenant, proclaiming the Lord's death until he comes again. Let us worship the Lord. I invite you to stand as you are able as we sing hymn number 203, Yesu, Yesu, fill us with your love. I'm sorry, I didn't know, I thought that was it. Go right ahead, sorry. Well, now I would invite you to rise as you are able as we sing uh, hymn 203, Yesu, Yesu, fill us with your love.
Please be seated. Even among Jesus' closest disciples, not all were clean. On this night, we confess the ways we disappoint, deny, or even betray Jesus, our teacher and Lord. Our confession of sin is made in the sure knowledge that Jesus is able to wash us in forgiveness and love. Shall we pray? Holy God, you have called us to serve others as Christ has served us. We confess that we have not followed Christ's example as fully or as often as we should. We turn away from people in need. True humility eludes us, and we hide our own vulnerability from others. You have commanded us to love one another as you have loved us. We confess that we do not love so generously. Gathered on this Holy Thursday, we confess that we are capable of denying and betraying you and one another no less than the first disciples. Forgive us, merciful God, and cleanse us of all sin. Then guide our feet to walk with you always. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Disciples of Christ, having loved his own who were in the world, Jesus loved them to the end. Jesus knows us fully and offers love and forgiveness unconditionally. In gratitude for the gift of grace given to us and a witness to our faith in Christ, let us pass the peace to each other as a sign of our love for one another. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us share a sign of peace. I invite you now to hear the word of God. First, our epistle reading for tonight is 1 Corinthians 11, verses 23 through 26. I invite you to hear the word of God. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. And also a reading from the Gospels. This is in the Gospel of John, chapter 13, verses 1 through 17, and continuing in 31b to 35. The Word of God. Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas son of Simon the Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, 
you do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he had said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you're right, for that is what I am. So if you, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you should also do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you're blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I'm going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Philosophers and anthropologists, they have long debated over what makes human beings different from other creatures. It isn't our ability to build our own shelter. Lots of animals do that. Birds and beavers, they build their own places. It isn't our use of tools, either. We're not the only ones that use tools. Lots of animals have figured out ways to use those. Even a seagull can employ a rock to open a shell. We aren't different because we organize ourselves into societies. Ants, for, for instance, have an elaborate social structure, including hospitals for those injured and sick and nurseries for their young ants, their little ants. Nor is it our use of language that sets us apart. Whales and dolphins, they have sophisticated language as well. It isn't even our larger brain, because to be honest, dolphins actually have bigger brains than we do, in comparison with their bodies at least. There are a lot of things that human beings have in common with other creatures. But there is one thing, perhaps, that sets us apart from the animals, the rest of the created beings that are out there. Human beings are the only ones that have an act of remembrance. We're the only ones that really do that. We're the only ones that both remember and honor their dead. Now, I've seen stories and I've seen movies about those faithful dogs that won't leave their owner's sides and they even go to the funeral and they sit very attentively and they appear to mourn. But you know, when it's over, it's over. And even man's best friend moves on. I've also read stories about elephants. When they come upon the dead body of another elephant, they will stop and they will touch it with their trunks and they'll trumpet loudly as if mourning the loss. And sometimes that can go on for hours. But then they too move on. Only human beings erect mausoleums and tombstones to keep the memory of a loved one alive. We are the only species who endow colleges, and hospitals, and libraries, parks, and scholarships in a loved one's name. Remembrance seems to be one of the things that's truly unique to human beings. We don't want to forget our loved ones. And we ourselves don't want to be forgotten either. You know, there is a little cemetery in Hiawatha, Kansas, where there is a strange tribute to one man's desire to be remembered, a man named John M. Davis. He was a wealthy but, let's say, eccentric local farmer. His wife had died decades before him in 1930. And soon after her death, Davis began commissioning a series of statues, first using Kansas granite, but then later he went into Italian marble. And these statues depicted important scenes in Davis's life. The Davis Memorial is large, it is impressive, it is expensive, and it draws a lot of visitors to little Hiawatha, Kansas. Some of you know it or have heard about it. I see some nodding heads. Davis sought to be remembered, and he is, as a bit of a curious man, maybe even kind of an oddball, but he is remembered. Human beings remember. We all want to be remembered. So what did Jesus ask for us as a remembrance? He wrote no books. He established no organizations. That came later when Paul and the early church did that, but Jesus didn't do it. He chose no clear successor. He left no memorials. He built nothing in his own honor. No, the way Jesus wanted to be remembered was through a simple act. On the night before he died, he gathered his 12 closest followers in, together in what I imagine to be a smoky, dimly lit room, a floor or so above the busy streets outside. Those gathered there were mostly poor, mostly uneducated, mostly unsophisticated, and usually unreliable individuals. One was a betrayer, one of them was a denier, but all of them, would abandon Jesus in the end. But Jesus knew all this already. He knew that was coming. Still, he entrusted his life's work and his memory to this group. He gave them a simple thing to do to remember him, this act of communion. This is my body, 
broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The cup, it's the new covenant, sealed by my blood. Drink this in remembrance of me. No buildings, no books, no structures of any kind, no successor, just bread and wine. Doesn't seem like much, does it? Yet some 2,000 years later, we still do this in remembrance of him. So tonight, as we receive communion once again, let us remember, let us remember Jesus. Let us remember the character of his life. Let us remember his prayerfulness, how he got up early, stayed up late to pray to God. Let us remember his gentleness, how he liked to call the little children to himself. Let us remember his joy and enthusiasm for life that was infectious. Let's remember how he resisted temptation and never gave in to sin. Let us remember his concern for the sick, the needy, the forgotten, those not on the inside of life. Let us remember how he spoke up for what he believed. Let us remember his courage in the face of death. And let us remember when he was dying, he offered prayers even for his enemies. Let us remember how he was obedient to God, even though it meant suffering and death. When we share the bread and the cup, as he asked us to, and remember, we are remembering the purest, best, most remarkable human being that ever lived. So as we gather tonight, let us remember Jesus' life. And let us also remember that he willingly gave up this life for our sake. You know, in Norway, there's a small church known as the Church of the Lamb. Its steeple is topped not with a cross, but with a wooden carving of a lamb. Not an uncommon symbol for Jesus, but that's not why that lamb got placed on top of that steeple. It seems that as the church was being built, there was a crew of workers up on the roof. One man lost his footing, and he slipped off the roof. He might have been killed. Except at that precise moment, there was a flock of sheep being driven past the church. So this unfortunate, or maybe it's fortunate, workman, he fell on top of one of the sheep, which broke his fall and saved his life. But the sheep was killed. Later, when the church was completed, the congregation decided to put a carving of a sheep up on the steeple to be reminded of the animal itself, but also to be reminded of Jesus who is also known as the Lamb of God. Jesus, not accidentally, but knowingly and willingly, gave up his life for us all. This evening, as we receive the bread and cup, let us remember Jesus' sacrificial death. But most of all, let us remember, sense, experience, and be guided by his continued presence with us in this meal shared in his memory for he is here with us. And that, my friends, is something worth remembering. May God be praised. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able as we sing hymn number 494, Jesus, Thou Joy of Loving Hearts.
seated. <coughs> the Lord said to Moses, This shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival of the Lord. Paul says to the church, As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Shall we be in prayer together? It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, O Lord our God, creator and ruler of the universe. You made us in your image, and freed us from the bonds of slavery. You claimed us as your people and made covenant to be our God. You fed us manna in the wilderness and brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey. When we forgot your covenant, you spoke through prophets, calling us to turn again to your ways. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. In humility, he descends from the heights to kneel in obedience to love's commands. He who is boundless takes on the bondage of our sin. He who is free takes our place in death's prison. He who is risen leads us to eternal life. Remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we take this bread and this wine from the gifts you've given us and celebrate with joy the redemption won for us in Jesus Christ. Accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, as a living and holy offering of ourselves that our lives may proclaim the one crucified and risen. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and cup, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, unite us with the living Christ and with all who are baptized in his name, that we may be one in ministry in every place, as this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. Lead us, O God, by the power of your Spirit, to live as love commands. Bound to Christ, set us free for joyful obedience and glad service. As Jesus gave his life for ours, help us to live our lives for others with humility and persistent courage. Give us strength to serve you faithfully until the promised day of resurrection, when with the redeemed of all the ages, we will feast with you at your table in glory. Through Christ, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, now and forever. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Will you join me now in the words of institution printed in your bulletin? On the night of his arrest, the Lord Jesus took bread and broke it, saying, this is my body given for you. Remember me. And as Jesus gave thanks to God, we also give thanks for his life, our bread of life. On that same night, in the same way, the Lord Jesus took the cup, saying, this is my blood, Poured out for you, this do also to remember me. As Jesus gave thanks to God, we also give thanks for this new covenant of God's love sealed in the blood of Jesus. When you eat this bread and drink this cup, remember the Lord Jesus. Remember and be thankful. Remember until he comes. Remember us when you come, Lord Jesus. My friends, all is ready. I invite you to come to the table.
Shall we pray? God of grace, we give you thanks for the feast of redemption that we have shared in the body and blood of our Savior. As you have nourished us with love, let our lives proclaim your great love for the world through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We will now be stripping the chancel of the communion and the pyramids of Lent as we prepare ourselves for Good Friday. I invite you to remain seated quietly in the pews, and when we are done, if you could depart in silence. 